really glad he didn't say he's the right person to come to to hear to play the guitar or sing. Um, so access to affordable housing in this country, in this province, in this city should be a right, not a privilege. And indeed, Article 25 of the UN Convention on Human Rights says just that. And of course, Canada is a signatory to that UN Convention. C.D. Howe Institute put it a little differently. They said the provision of affordable housing is a basic pillar of a civilized society. T.D. Bank, housing is a necessity of life, yet one in five households in Canada is still unable to accept affordable shelter. Indeed, affordable housing is though no longer an issue. It's just confined to those on fixed incomes, social assistance, or age. The working poor, people with full-time jobs, even well above the minimum wage, are struggling to handle the rent increases or purchase their own home. Many of those people have been lured, lured to our province by the economic boom, only to find they cannot find acceptable, affordable housing once they get here. To illustrate, if you were to visit any of our emergency shelters, you'll see many signs beside their mat or their, or their cot uh, with times posted. And those times are what time they need to be roused in the morning so that they can be the first in front of uh, the job line. And uh, the TD Bank also said, you know, we're used to thinking about affordable housing as a social and a health issue. And we certainly heard from first couple of speakers how important it is from the health point. But finding solutions to affordable housing is also smart economic policy. An adequate supply of affordable housing can be a major impediment to business involvement and growth and can influence, influence immigrants' choices of where to locate. Again, TD Bank. So I could go on and on about the economic uh, argument, but I think that, that might be somewhat crass. Um, just to depict it, affordable housing is an economic issue. Access to affordable, suitable, secure, affordable housing is a critical foundation for social inclusion, neighborhood vitality, individual and community health, especially children, and employability. And that last, you know, we often say in the, in, within our 10-year plan to end homelessness, uh, the simple equation, uh, no home, no job, no job, no home, a vicious circle. So let me talk just quickly about how uh, housing influences the child. It influences them in three ways. Symbolically, meaning you know, which side of the tracks you were raised on matters and affects the child's sense of identity. Physically, that's kind of the obvious one in terms of health and safety, and social economically. Let me, let me give you an example, a practical example of that in our city. Um, a number of years ago, it was approached by the Edmonton Public School Board, and they were concerned that the, some of their inner city schools, they were seeing extremely high uh, student turnover. And when I say high, the one, the one school had a 96% turnover rate in the year. When we did a little bit of homework, we found out that the reason why was because their parents uh, could not afford the housing they were in and would end up becoming evicted and moving on and on and on. Now consider that educators say that for every time a child has to change schools, they're set back in their education by a month. So think about that if you're a kid and you three times a year you're having to find a new place to live. So in terms of the stats, what's, what's it like in our city? Well, we have 38,500 renter households who have an affordability problem. That is, they're spending over 30% of their household gross household income on rent, and they're below the median income. What's even more alarming is 22,000 households are paying in excess of 50% of their household income on rent. So what does that say? Well, that says that they're having to rob somewhere else to pay their rent every month, which typically means uh, clothing, food, and so you see our increases at the food bank. And we just heard from Jim earlier the uh, release of our most recent homeless count. And, and, and some, I, I must admit, I was um, pleasantly surprised that the numbers weren't much higher given the 
huge increase in people coming to our, our province and our city. Uh, but the fact that we still have 2,250 homeless people in our community is 2,250 too many. So I want to leave you with, um, with uh, apologies to David Letterman. Um, my personal top 10 list of what needs to be done. First and foremost, a national and provincial housing strategy. Almost 30 years ago, Michael Fish and Susan Dennis wrote in a book entitled Programs in Search of a Policy. Well, we're there again. Once again, we've got, fortunately, do have a number of housing programs at the federal and provincial level, but we have no housing strategy. Just yesterday, the Minister of Seniors for the province of Alberta did indicate that the province was developing a housing strategy, so we're happy. Mm -hmm. Number nine, three orders of government working together. Um, too often I hear that, well, it's a provincial responsibility, or it's a federal responsibility, or it's a municipal responsibility. It's all our responsibility. The, number eight, adequate support services. As we've seen with our housing first approach, uh, it is very effective in ending homelessness. But a safe, affordable roof over someone's head is absolutely necessary, but it's not sufficient. Uh, our homeless population has multiple barrier, barriers that, that need to be addressed and we need to provide those services. Number seven, we have to deal with NIMBY. Uh, we need to find ways to accept uh, new residents into all of our communities, regardless of their uh, income level or their infirmity. And number six, we have to bust the myths. Uh, we heard from Frank that uh, he chose to be homeless. I'd argue that it's an absence of good choices that we have uh, is the reason why we still have homeless. You know, does a woman with her children fleeing domestic violence choose to be homeless? I don't think so. Number five, we need to engage the private sector. The private sector has to be convinced that affordable housing makes good economic sense and they have to be part of the solution. Four, we have to build community capacity. There's considerable goodwill, skill and energy in the not-for-profit housing sector in our community, but it's frustrated by the lack of sustained support from government. Number three, we have to involve the Aboriginal community. Uh, the most recent count, I believe the number was 48% of our homeless population identified as Aboriginal. Number two, we have to build inclusive communities. Affordable housing should be part of every development and every community. And if properly ex executed, affordable housing should and can be indistinguishable from the market housing. And number one, dedicated, sustained funding. If we're going to provide affordable housing for all Edmontonians, Albertans, and Canadians, three or five year government programs just aren't gonna cut it. We need to find a dedicated, sustained source of funding to make it happen. And I think we, we can make it happen and should make it happen. Thank you.